Terraria was officially released on May 16th, 2011. And ever since the game's release all those years ago, Terraria is currently the second highest ranked Steam game of all time, just behind Portal 2. And today, we're going to talk about the game's iceberg. This is the ultimate Terraria iceberg. Created by Reddit user FirewaterGamer751, this iceberg contains roughly 260 entries as well as 10 different individual tiers. Now, I assume that everyone who watches these is familiar with the iceberg format, but if you aren't, all you really need to know is that the farther we go down with the entries, the more unknown the material in the iceberg is. And just like with my other iceberg videos, the confidence meter is returning once again. And this meter is going to be measured with life, just like in the Minecraft video. I don't think I really need to explain how this works, but I'm going to do it anyway. If the confidence meter is at full, then I know for a fact that what I'm talking about is what the entry represents, and if the confidence meter is at zero, then I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Okay, let's get into it. Developers. This entry is pretty much just referring to the Terraria devs themselves. Terraria has had several different developers throughout the years, with some of them being people like Red, Aaron, Lazier, and Chrono. Tutorial World. In the older versions of the console version, as well as the mobile and 3DS versions, Terraria had a tutorial world that was very similar to the ones in Minecraft. The player would start on a small floating island, and the player would be instructed to do very basic tasks like collecting wood and mining ores. Along with this world also randomly generating your character, the map has a plethora of easter eggs hidden throughout the map, which mostly includes things like chests giving the player a healthy amount of items. Forms. The Terraria Forms is a website that was created sometime in the middle of 2014, and this website is just the main form page for Terraria. PewDiePie Playthrough In November of 2019, after somehow not playing the game at all for many years, PewDiePie finally started up a Let's Play series of Terraria, and it was incredibly well received all throughout the community. Felix ended up loving the game, and his Let's Play of Terraria was so popular that Relogic ended up collaborating with Felix on things like merch, and even helped create a Moonlord figure holding a tambourine, which is a reference to a running joke on PewDiePie's channel. Official Lore Like you will come to find out later, Terraria has lore that's much deeper than meets the eye. And while the game was initially released without a clear story to it, the developers eventually did end up writing a story for the game's characters and gameplay elements in celebration of the 8th anniversary of the game. The story was released as book pages in May of 2019, and to put most of it briefly, the Crimson is a single living being connected directly to each world, sharing a hive mind, and solely focused on restoring balance at all costs. The corruption is a cancer caused by the sins of those living in the worlds of Terraria. The vile actions and thoughts present in all beings feed the growth of the corruption as it spreads relentlessly across each world. And the hollow is an overcompensation of purity taken to the absolute extreme. And your story begins with Cthulhu, who is an ancient being with one goal of wiping out all sentient life present on your Terraria world. And there was nothing that could even hope to stop him. But when all hope was lost, the ancient race of Dryads waged battle against him, and against all odds, the Dryads did eventually manage to defeat Cthulhu. And with the Dryads' combined power, they were able to cripple Cthulhu by ripping out his eyes, parts of his skeleton, and chunks of his brain. And the damage that the Dryads caused forced him to retreat to the dark side of the moon, where he would spend the rest of his life gathering strength for another attempt at total conquest. And this is referred to as the Great War of Cthulhu. Several years after the Great War of Cthulhu, rumors told of a lunatic cult led by a fanatical zealot that is methodically seeking to revive Cthulhu to its former power and bring about the end of the world. Many people fell under possession of the cult, including the mechanic, who was kidnapped and forced to rebuild the parts to recreate Cthulhu. The mechanic nearly completed the project, only needing to finish the mechanical brain to restore Cthulhu back to his former glory. The old man also fell victim to the cult as the overseer of the dungeon, a once thriving city full of life until a curse forced all of its inhabitants to go mad, living beyond the point where their bodies rotted away, becoming mindless undead servants of evil. And this brings us to our adventure. 
and that begins with you. In humble beginnings with help from your guide, will you stand up and fight for Terraria against the growing shadows of impending doom? References to other media. Terraria has several different references to other media all throughout it, which includes things like the SDMG as a reference to the game Edge of Space, Don't Starve Together doing a massive crossover collab with Terraria, featuring 33 new additions to the game, which also featured Deerclops as a boss in Terraria, and vice versa, and probably the most iconic reference is the Creeper set, which is very obviously a reference to none other than Minecraft. There's more references than this, but these are just a couple examples. T-Mod Loader Everyone obviously knows what T-Mod Loader is, but before officially becoming an add-on to the game on Steam, T-Mod Loader, while still being very well known about, was slightly harder to install and get working as opposed to it now being available on the same platform as the game itself. T-Mod Loader was initially released in December of 2015 by Blushy Magic, with installation being fully manual and not being officially endorsed by Relogic. And it wasn't until May 16th, 2020, that T-Mod Loader would officially release on Steam as DLC alongside Terraria itself. Time. Just like with most games that have a sun and moon, Terraria also has a day-night cycle of 24 minutes per day, with daytime being calm and collected, while nighttime is usually the exact opposite. This is a pretty standard format used in these kinds of games, but I thought I'd bring it up anyway because not everyone knows about the 24 minute cycle. Major versions. Terraria has had five major versions, which are 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4. Music. The music in Terraria is S tier, and whether the music is for you or not, the songs all nail their themes nearly perfectly, with the overworld day theme being the most popular track. Enemies and bosses. As you could probably imagine, Terraria is filled with over 500 enemies, with seven of them being the main and most important bosses. There's another entry on this list called Game Progress, and I think that this entry ties really well when talking about the game's bosses, because as you know, defeating the bosses are the main stepping stones to the game's progression. Terraria Otherworld Initially being teased on Engine Software's YouTube channel in November of 2014, Terraria Otherworld was intended to be a new spin-off game of Terraria, and it was described as an open-world sandbox RPG slash strategy game that took a novel approach to the Terraria experience to explore what might have been. The game actually looked really interesting, but the game's development was unfortunately terminated in April of 2018, with Relogic announcing that it just didn't live up to what they had envisioned. Relogic did end up adding a previously unreleased soundtrack into regular Terraria, accessible through the Party Girl. Old Gen Content Terraria has a lot of old gen exclusive content, with the most notable being the boss Okram, which a lot of older console players might remember, as well as a bunch of enemies and items exclusive to certain versions of the game. The old gen console releases also had a unique loading icon, being a slightly illuminated thorn ball, and the Japanese version also has some of their own variety sets, which includes four sets and a crafting material, but more on exclusivity later. Secret World Seeds this entry is sort of similar to the Gargamel seed from Minecraft in that certain seeds in Terraria have special easter eggs that generate throughout the world. For example, the seed 516-2020 is referred to in the game's source code as Drunk World Gen, and this seed was created to celebrate the 9th anniversary of Terraria. The seed generates both evil biomes, as well as both of the hard mode ore variants, the guide is replaced by the party girl, and the dungeon's entrance is now generated under a living tree which is painted brown. Additional seeds include Not the Bees, which turns nearly everything into honey, including the ocean. Celebration Mark 10 not only celebrates Terraria's 10th birthday, but it also spawns the player on the ocean and immediately starts a party on a very colorful world. And the last one I'll talk about is the seed For the Worthy, which is a seemingly normal seed, but the biggest difference is that this seed is one of two seeds that unlocks a secret legendary difficulty. In this hidden difficulty, all enemies' contact damage, health, and coin drop rates are increased, the damage is also increased by 33%, 
Bunnies are replaced with explosive bunnies. All demons are replaced with voodoo demons. The demolitionist replaces the guide. And everything in the world is generally harder throughout the seed. Terraria is 2D Minecraft. When Terraria was first gaining popularity in the early 2010s, people in the Minecraft community initially seemed to assume that all Terraria was was just a 2D version of Minecraft. And while there's definitely someone out there who genuinely thinks that Terraria is 2D Minecraft, both communities have turned this into a running joke for many years. Roar0.wav Roar Zero is the sound file that plays any time a boss is spawned into the world, and I'm sure many of you have very fond memories of this sound. Dungeon Guardian The Dungeon Guardian is a pretty infamous dungeon enemy that appears when trying to go into the dungeon before defeating Skeletron. The enemy has 9,999 HP and defense, so good luck trying to kill him before getting any good items. When I first played Terraria over a decade ago, the Dungeon Guardian scared me so badly that I unplugged my Xbox and probably didn't touch it for a week. Cthulhu Cthulhu is a fictional cosmic entity created by the now famous HP Lovecraft all the way back in 1928 with his short story named The Call of Cthulhu. Cthulhu obviously has heavy importance to Terraria's first ever bosses, as well as the role he plays in the game's story that I talked about earlier. And since I already talked about his importance, we're going to move on. World Barrier I don't really know why this is on here, but Terraria's world borders are represented through both of the oceans on either sides of the map. Events In Terraria's case, Events are temporary occasions where varieties of special enemies can spawn, which can range from things as simple as rain, to the invasion of the Frost Legion. Literally everyone knows when an event is, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. The Guide is the Wall of Flesh In order to summon the Wall of Flesh, the guide has to be sacrificed by throwing a guide voodoo doll into a pit of lava in the underworld, which could imply that the guide and the wall of flesh are related to each other, or that maybe they are one and the same. It is an interesting game mechanic to sacrifice someone as helpful as the guide, but you also have to remember just how fantasy based the game really is, so it's honestly not an impossible theory. Yuramir Yuramir is considered by many to be legendary, and with his first ever video being him defeating the Eye of Cthulhu the day Terraria came out, Yuramir stood out for his high level of game knowledge as well as being able to complete several major challenges in the community with relative ease. Yuramir was also a beta tester of the game and amassed a massive following on YouTube due to how good he was at the game. Some of his absolutely insane challenges included defeating the Dungeon Guardian on the second night, doing the Wall of Flesh on the second night, and killing the Dungeon Guardian in two seconds. Yuramir unfortunately hasn't uploaded in well over five years at this point, and it's unclear if he'll ever return to not only Terraria, but to making videos entirely. Green Cap If you manage to kill a guide named Andrew, the guide will drop a green cap when killed. The hat gives only two defense, and the item is a reference to the main developer of the game. Minecraft Minecraft and Terraria have a very healthy relationship with each other, with both games not only inspiring each other in certain aspects, but both of the games have splashes that shout each other out, which is something that you don't really see in a lot of games. Ivy The Ivy is a novelty instrument that will drop from the Steampunker, but it will only drop if the Steampunker's name is Whitney, as a reference to the name of Redigit's wife. The Witch Doctor is a Lizard There is pretty good evidence in the game that the Witch Doctor is actually a lizard. The Doctor's green skin and tail are pretty big indicators, and during a party, he talks about how he wanted to see how your kind celebrated during a party, which pretty much confirms this. Eye of Cthulhu on Box Art On the original box art for Terraria, the Eye of Cthulhu, as well as some other notable parts of the game, are present. Red Potion the Red Potion was a hidden potion that was originally unobtainable, 
but it only recently was discovered that you could actually get the potion in the seeds for the worthy and the drunk world that we talked about earlier. If you use the potion in any world that wasn't the two special seeds, it would inflict 11 different debuffs for at the very least an hour. But if you use the potion on the worthy seeds, the potion would randomly pick 3 out of 18 different buffs and apply them for 30 minutes. Empress of Light Nose The nose on the Empress of Light has caused many people to confuse her nose to actually be her mouth. Chrono has said on Twitter that the V-shape on her face is in fact her nose, but I'm never going to be able to see it that way. Queen Bee Immediate Spawn In older Terraria worlds, there was a very rare chance for the Queen Bee to instantly spawn the second the player spawned into the world. This used to happen because of the world generation in which Larva had a very small chance for something to break it when the world generated, and in turn, the Queen Bee would instantly spawn. Human Quack Every quack from a duck has a 1 in 300 chance of making a human sounding quack noise. The sound comes from a royalty free sound site, and this was added intentionally as a fun little easter egg. Quack. Companion Cube The Companion Cube is a rare item sold by the traveling merchant as a reference to the Companion Cube from Portal. And not only does it cost 5 platinum coins, but it also has special attributes like having a sound effect in lava and attacking the player in completely dark areas. Tutorial World Secrets Like I sort of mentioned earlier, the original Tutorial World on the 3DS and Windows Phone versions features 10 main secrets on its map, with some of them being a massive vein of gold, a 4 block thick obsidian layer above the lava in the underworld, and a platform on the bottom left side of the map containing some furniture and a chest. Golden Shower Cheese The Golden Shower is a hard mode magic weapon that shoots a constant golden stream similar to the Aqua Scepter. The weapon's fast speed and ability to pierce anything that gets in its path using Icker makes a great weapon for killing large groups of enemies at the same time, especially effective on enemies with a similar shape. The reason this item is so good is because the weapon will cut any enemy's defense by 15, which then makes whatever enemy you hit with it much easier to kill. Daedalus Stormbow Cheese The original Daedalus Stormbow was one of the most broken items in the game when combined with Holy Arrows. The weapon already rapidly fired arrows from the sky, but Holy Arrows would shoot two stars from above at the same time, resulting in an absolutely broken synergy, which was extremely effective on pretty much every enemy in the entire game. Bone Key If you manage to defeat the Dungeon Guardian, it drops an item called the Bone Key, which is a pet item that summons a fun mini guardian pet. Grapple Cancel If you press the spacebar right as your hook hits a platform, the flight time of your wings will fully reset, which gives constant flight time and can give good speed depending on what angle you do it at. You can also do this without wings to run a little faster, but it's not as effective as when you have wings. Luck Luck in Terraria's case is a secret stat that determines nearly everything that happens in the game. This actually gets quite complicated, but all you really need to know is that the highest amount of luck you can get is 1.4, and the lowest possible luck you can get is negative 0.4. Having a luck score greater than 1 gives you a 100% chance to increase your luck, and having less than 1 gives you a negative 100% chance of decreasing. The hidden stat can also change depending on what the player does in game, and even something as simple as playing with ladybugs can change this hidden stat. Terrorblade Recipe Change up until 1.4, the Terrorblade's recipe used to require a broken hero sword to craft, but was later changed to not include it in the final crafting step. Duplication Glitches Just like with Minecraft's history, Terraria has also had its fair share of duplication glitches. There have been many different methods throughout the years, ranging from duplicating chests for coins to using broken item frames to duplicate items that way. There's also ways to duplicate worlds, characters, and some of the glitches can even be done on multiplayer. Daylight Empress of Light Many different bosses have what's known as an enraged version, and in the case of the Empress of Light, her enraged fight is easily one of the hardest. During the day, the Empress of Light will not only one-shot you no matter what you do, but if you manage to kill her, you will be rewarded with an exclusive item called the Terra Prisma, which summons a sword to fight for you, and it's the best summoner weapon in the entire game, at least in terms of damage per second. Flails 
Before update 1.4, flail items used to be significantly worse than they are now, and this is due to the items being ineffective as it is, but the item pool received a major buff in 1.4, and the items have since been significantly improved. Sunglasses Sun If you put on sunglasses, then the sun will revert back to an old 1.2 texture in which the sun is wearing sunglasses, and leaving the world will also make it show up on the title screen. Green Jungle The background of the jungle is green, as opposed to the blue backgrounds used in most other backgrounds in the game. This is pretty odd due to jungles not actually having green skies in real life, and one theory is that this was done to easily distinguish the jungle from other biomes in the game. First Fractal The First Fractal is an unobtainable melee weapon that was originally supposed to be added as an in-game item in 1.4, but the concept was discarded during its development and then later was replaced by the Zenith instead. And while the Zenith is much cleaner looking, this and the Zenith are seriously awesome swords. Minecraft is 3D Terraria Terraria was released a whopping six months before Minecraft was, so it's totally possible that Minecraft could be 3D Terraria. This also kind of links back to the Terraria being 2D Minecraft joke that I talked about earlier. The groom and bride are the angler's parents. The angler is an NPC that was added in update 1.2.4 alongside fishing, and some time after the update came out, people started to speculate that the angler's parents may have been the groom and the bride from the Blood Moon. Red later confirmed this, saying that the bride and the groom were not only married, but that the angler was also their son. Developer items Developer items were initially introduced in update 1.2, but none of the items are possible to obtain legitimately. And if you somehow did manage to obtain things like Red's armor, putting it on would inflict damage until the armor was taken off. This was eventually removed, and 1.3 finally saw the introduction of obtainable developer items, which have a 5% chance to be randomly dropped from bosses, as well as being obtainable by opening treasure bags in expert mode. All worlds are connected. There's an ongoing theory about whether or not Terraria worlds are connected, and the idea is that the oceans at the ends of each world secretly connect to another world, and so on and so forth forever. This theory could also explain why the Terraria world seems to not have any curvature in its world. Zappinator The Zappinator was an item that dropped from Plantera and used magic to shoot an electric-like beam. The weapon was initially reserved for developers as an insta-kill item, and since the weapon remained in the game for a short time, it had a short-lived title of being the most overpowered weapon in the entire game. This was eventually fixed, and the Zappinator itself is a reference to the Zappers for the original NES. Steam Trading Cards In July of 2013, Steam released a set of nine different individual game cards that could be sold on the marketplace or be used to do things like leveling up your Steam account. As far as I know though, these cards don't really do anything else other than level up your Steam account and sell on the marketplace, but I don't know. I've had some of these for years, and I still need to collect them all myself. The Torch God the Torch God is an event that is triggered by placing a lot of torches underground at at least 200 blocks underneath of the surface. And once started, the torches will start to fly off and go towards the player, and upon completing the event, the player is rewarded with the Torch God's favor, which is an item that gives you the ability to have torches match the biome that they are in. The event is unique in that the player needs to dodge and survive in order to complete it, as there's no actual enemies or bosses that you actually have to attack. Okram Okram is one of the final bosses in the old-gen console version, Windows Phone version, and 3DS version. The boss was released as a form of new content, but was eventually removed in all maintained versions due to the boss not actually being developed by Relogic. The boss was summoned by using a suspicious looking skull at night, and killing Okram was the only possible way to obtain Souls of Blight. Hoik. A hoik is a sawtooth series of sloped blocks, sometimes referred to as teeth, which can rapidly move entities across distances. When a character shares space with a sloped block, the character is immediately displaced by a couple of tiles in a predictable direction, and by chaining these glitches together via a series of strategically placed blocks, entities can be moved rapidly in any direction over long distances. 
it becomes easy to achieve horizontal travel at 60 or even 120 tiles per second using a hoik, and vertical travel exceeds it at 180 tiles per second, which is much faster than many of the other ways you can travel in the game. Hoiks have been possible to make since version 1.2, though their utility to players was originally considered an exploited glitch. But since 1.3, Relogic officially acknowledged hoiks as a game feature, meaning that they are no longer considered an unintentional benefit that might be repaired in future versions, and their functionality will remain in the game for the foreseeable future. Terrarian Legendary Prefix Yo-yos cannot have a change in speed, which is why yo-yos cannot have a prefix of legendary. But the Terrarian is the only yo-yo that can have it as an exclusion by the developers to celebrate the release of 1.4. And along with the Terrarian having this special exclusion, a company called One Drop Yo-Yos released a yo-yo called the Legendary Terrarian at the same time as the in-game one. Angler Immortality Unlike every other NPC in the game, the Angler is the only NPC that doesn't die when his health is brought down to zero, but instead just leaves the premise. It is said that the fact that the Angler is a child probably has something to do with why he doesn't just die. Angel Statue Uselessness Angel statues were originally unable to be sold or even placed, though now it can be sold and placed. The uselessness of this statue caused a running joke that the angel statue serves no purpose whatsoever, and the developers seem to agree, with the merchant even saying, Angel statue you say? I'm sorry, I'm not a junk dealer. Goblin is a scammer. This entry is referring to a popular fan-made joke about how the Goblin Tinkerer oftentimes gives you many prefixes that are not what you're looking for until finally giving you the buff that you're actually trying to get. This resulted in a joke that the Goblin is a scammer. Large Bomb The tutorial world features a bomb with the large prefix, which is the only non-weapon featuring a legitimate modifier. Overpowered Zoologist The Zoologist has a powerful attack in addition to its knockback, and the attack can deal a pretty significant amount of damage to enemies, making the Zoologist pretty overpowered compared to other NPCs. Luminite Tools Hammers, axes, and chainsaws have their own features for each pillar in the game files, but are unobtainable in the base game. And while ham axes are obtainable for each substance, it would have been pretty cool to see the base tools in the game as well. Stadia Controversy in February of 2021, Red had his Google account terminated for an apparent TOS violation, even though nothing had been done to warrant his account being deleted. And because of this, Red announced on Twitter that Relogic would no longer support any of Google's platforms, as well as saying that Terraria for the Stadia was cancelled. But a month later in March, Google released the game onto Google Stadia anyway, because of course they did. Red did eventually get his account back, but this experience with Google would definitely change the way he looked at Google as a company. Rec 3000 Abbreviation The Rec 3000 is a post-Skeletron accessory which combines the functionalities of the radar, tally counter, and lifeform analyzer, but as for what the meaning of Rec is, the community still doesn't fully know. The most accepted meaning is that it stands for rares, enemies, and kills, but nothing has been fully confirmed as of me making this video. It's also possible that it could be a reference to the Garden of Eden creation kit, since it's commonly abbreviated as a GEC, and there's also a chance that it could be a nod to the Pip-Boy 3000 from Fallout. Zenith has infinite range. Since they are made to move as far as the cursor, the sword projectiles used by the Zenith have an infinite range that can actually go off of your screen. Planter Box Arenas Planter boxes are capable of working as platforms, being able to fall through them, but they also have several advantages to regular platforms. Lava will pass through a planter box instead of destroying them like with normal platforms, and Skeletron Prime Bombs do not explode on planter boxes. Tombstones can also land on them, and torches can be placed on the side of the planter boxes. Dungeon Defenders 2 Dungeon Defenders 2 is a 3D tower defense game and this game has the most references in Terraria out of any company, with the majority of the Old One's army being inspired from the tower defense game. Dungeon Defenders 2 also added Dryad as a hero, heavily based from Terraria, and the game also added the forest biome, as well as the Eye of Cthulhu itself. Terra Toilet If you really wanted to, you could sacrifice a broken hero sword to make this. Seriously? 
This is what you used your broken hero sword for? A toilet? Whatever. Your loss. Music boxes. There's a collection of music boxes called Otherworldly Music Boxes, which play the songs from Terraria Otherworld that we talked about earlier. Frozen Zombie Rename In older versions of Terraria, the Frozen Zombie was originally called the Eskimo Zombie, but the name was later changed due to the phrase being offensive. NPC Family Tree I mentioned earlier how the Angler's parents are existing enemies in the game, but several NPCs are said to be children or parents to others, with substantial proof throughout the game to surround this. Old Gen Boss Icon Every old generation boss has always had the same skull icon on the map, and this was most likely used as a template for if the devs ever planned on changing it when implementing new bosses. And if you were one of those people that played the old gen console editions, then you probably remember this icon. Curved Forges Yep, forges used to be curved and looked like this. I personally wasn't playing the game when they looked like this, so to me, it's really really weird looking. <laughs> Locked Skyware Chest Before update 1.2, floating islands used to contain golden chests that required dungeon keys to unlock, but this was later changed with update 1.2, which revamped the Sky Islands entirely. Lepus and Turker the Ungrateful Lepus and Turker the Ungrateful are bosses exclusive to the Windows Phone and 3DS versions of Terraria. Lepus is summoned with a suspicious looking egg and can hatch multiple types of eggs in which either Diseaster bunnies spawn, or a smaller and weaker version of Lepus will spawn instead, while Turkey the Ungrateful is a Thanksgiving-themed boss summoned with cursed stuffing while you have a pet turkey. Chinese version Similarly to how Minecraft has its own Chinese version, Terraria also has a Chinese version, and the version changes a massive amount of things in the game, removing skeletons and blood for example, and the version also retextures and reworks most of the bosses in the game in order to conform to the censorship and rules over in China. Bugged Death Messages Sometimes when defeating bosses as normal, messages had a small chance to appear on the screen saying that Skeletron Prime's hands have been defeated and that the Moon Lord's core has been defeated just to name two. Lunatic Cultist Treasure Bag In expert mode, bosses drop treasure bags as opposed to just dropping their items all over the ground, and in the case of the Lunatic Cultist, the boss doesn't drop a treasure bag despite a bag itself existing in the game files. Not like you're missing out on much though, considering that the bag only drops silver and an ancient cultist mask. The Old One's Army is useless while the Old One's Army has a lot of cool looking enemies, as well as Betsy being a cool boss as it is, I'm gonna have to agree that the Old One's Army is useless and that it doesn't really benefit you since you do the event so late into the game, and the issue is that most players just see it as one event left on their boss checklist. Chlorophyte Spreading Chlorophyte is a rare ore that spawns after defeating the Wall of Flesh, but it can't be mined until the player has a pickaxe power of at least 200%. This entry refers not to Chlorophyte itself, but more to the fact that the way that the game combats the scarcity of it is how it's easily able to grow by being surrounded by blocks of mud. If you ever get into a situation where Chlorophyte does become scarce, your best bet would be to grow it using mud like in the video I'm showing. The Wall of Flesh is the Guardian of the World I talked earlier about how the guide potentially being the Wall of Flesh isn't completely impossible, and as for the Wall of Flesh itself, it's actually canon to the game's lore that the Wall of Flesh not only acts as the guardian of the world, but it also acts as the master and the core of the world as well. Collector's Edition On June 20th, 2013, Terraria Collector's Edition was sold and distributed by partners of Terraria, and it was only available for desktop, PS3, and the Xbox 360. The Collector's Edition included a CD copy of Terraria, a case for the CD with Terraria graphics, a randomly colored pickaxe keychain with the logo on it, a poster of a landscape with the logo, two trading cards that acted like Pokemon cards, and an exclusive carrot, which is a pet item used to summon a bunny pet. 
The console editions also included an exclusive item crafting poster, a pickaxe flash drive, and three different stickers. Zombies are dead players. Some people have theorized that the reason that zombies have unique hairstyles in the same way that players can is because that zombies are actually dead remnants of players and NPCs. The only real evidence to back this up though is the fact that zombies can spawn with unique hairstyles. Every update is the final update. Every time Relogic announces a new major update for Terraria, they almost always say that this time it will be the final update. 1.3 is over 7 years old now, and that was supposed to be the final update, so maybe 1.4 is not the end? Wind. Before update 1.4, wind only existed for purely aesthetic purposes for things like rain and bubbles from the bubble machine. The purpose that it serves now is that it can be responsible for events like the Windy Day, which can spawn special enemies, as well as being able to summon a sandstorm. Infinite Fishing Lords Back in update 1.2.4, when Duke Fishron was introduced, there was a bug in where if you made it so that your game paused in the inventory and then threw out an item, it would cause a fishing line to duplicate, which made it possible to summon as many Duke Fishrons as you wanted to all at the same time. Terrarian and Kraken are real. Like I mentioned earlier about the legendary Terrarian, the Terrarian, along with the Kraken from Terraria, were both real yo-yos that were sold by a company called OneDrop Yo-Yos, and I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea how you even buy these now. Ancient Vision The Ancient Vision is an enemy that spawns during the cultist fight if the player attacks a duplicate cultist when the Phantasmal Dragon is still alive. The enemy is famous for its Cthulhu looking face, and these enemies have the same attack patterns as a Mothron. Uzi The Uzi is an item that has a rare chance to be dropped from an angry trapper, and though the drop chance now is a 1 in 100 chance, the original drop rate when 1.2 came out was a 1 in 80,000 chance, making it easily the rarest item in the entire game, even though the drop rate was fixed not too long after. Mudball the mud ball is an unused texture which resembles a dirt ball that is seen when moving dirt with a dirt rod. Maybe there was going to be a mud rod. <laughs> skull Bow The Skull Bow is not an unused item per se, but it is an unobtainable weapon that was probably going to drop in the early game. The bow also has stats, so I guess Relogic just either forgot to implement it or just left it out in the final game. Biome Key Molds Biome key molds are extremely rare crafting materials that are used to craft biome keys, and the molds have a 1 in 2500 chance of dropping from enemies after the wall of flesh has been defeated. Obviously the type of key mold depends on the biome you're in, and in certain legacy versions, the biome molds will instead drop as biome keys. 7 million plus DPS. In an optimized environment, the Zenith is surprisingly capable of reaching an insane amount of damage per second, managing to go over 7 million DPS in the right circumstances. Nimbus Rod cannot have Ruthless. Despite being a summoner item, the Nimbus Rod is for some reason unable to have the Ruthless prefix, and I have absolutely no idea why. Expert in Master Content in Journey Journey Mode has a difficulty slider that can switch the world from Journey all the way up to Master Mode. The difficulty slider also includes the content of the mode, which includes things like treasure bags from Expert and the relics from Master. Terraria Name Origin The official pronunciation of the popular title is Terraria due to it being based off of the word Terrarium, but honestly, say the name literally however you want because it does not matter. Holy Hand Grenade The Holy Hand Grenade is an Ojin bomb that caused double the destruction of dynamite. It was the largest bomb in the game and dealt the most damage out of any weapon for the time. The sound effect when throwing the bomb would also sing a chorus from Hallelujah. Golfer is Zoologist's brother. When asked about if the Golfer and Zoologist NPCs were related, Red confirmed in the Terraria Discord that they are in fact related, and that the in-game dialogue also confirms that they are. Negative Torch Luck Mismatched torches used to cause a negative torch luck value that would change the final luck score itself, but due to heavy criticism of the mechanic, the feature was eventually removed from the game. Oktoberfest Oktoberfest is a seasonal event for the 3DS and mobile versions that lasts from September 27th all the way up to October 31st. 
During the event, the Clothier and the Merchant sell unique items based on real-life Oktoberfest, and pumpkins will naturally grow on grass. Terraria Edge of Space Edge of Space is a 2D sandbox game created by Handyman Studios, and the SDMG in Terraria is a direct reference to the laser sharks from Edge of Space, and there's also a boss in the game called Omegatron, named after Skeletron and Skeletron Prime. The Legend of Max The Legend of Max is a webcomic based on Terraria that was started all the way back in April of 2012, with this being the first panel that Max had ever made for the series. Max is still adding on to the series to this day, with over 600 panels being made in the last 11 years since the series first began. Duck Entity Capping The flying form of a duck is actually a separate entity to a sitting duck, which makes it fill a space used for other entities. And if you have enough flying ducks, then the entity cap will be hit, causing no other enemies to be able to spawn when the ducks are alive. The entity cap was so broken that you could actually use this to skip massive portions of the game, including the Lunar Pillars, but a patch in 1.4 did eventually fix this. Ancient Set Origins The ancient armor set seems to bear a striking resemblance to Anubis, which is the god for mummification in ancient Egypt. The helmet seems to have a similar facial structure to that of Anubis himself, and I'm more than certain that this is what the developers are going for with the ancient set. Typical King Slime on Pinky's Revenge This entry is referring to a popular YouTube video from June of 2011, in which multiple players are all fighting enormous slimes, as well as a bunch of normal-sized pinkies. The reason that the slimes are so big in this video is because King Slime's size is actually determined by his health, so if you just found a mod that increased his health over the limit, then you would be able to make King Slimes just like the ones in the video. Wood Broken with Axes up until desktop version 1.2, wood was not broken with pickaxes like it is now, but was rather broken using axes instead. Life Crystals This entry is pretty much identical to the last one, and just like the name of the entry suggests, up until desktop 1.2, life crystals also used to be broken using hammers, as opposed to using pickaxes to break them now. Rocket Boots used mana Yes, you heard that right. Up until update 1.0.5, Rocket Boots would actually use the player's mana instead of being on a fixed time limit like it is now. Orb of Light Up until update 1.2, the Shadow Orb was instead called the Orb of Light, and the orb was orange instead of purple, acted as a buff requiring mana, and was basically the opposite of what the item later became. Upcoming Content the developers will sometimes include secrets in some of their posts that allude to upcoming content that hasn't left the development stage. A good example includes this tweet from Senex, in which you can see a debug build of 1.4 on our laptop, whether this is intentional or not. System Divide by Zero Exception this entry refers to a weird rendering issue that will only display if the game tries to divide something by zero. Not really sure what exactly you have to do in order to get this error message, but it's pretty funny regardless. Cthulhu Concept Along with being part of the game's official lore, Cthulhu plays a very important role in the bosses that include parts of him, as well as concept art being made for Cthulhu himself. I showed this art earlier when talking about the game's story, and it's not impossible that Cthulhu could be included in the game one day. Wither Spawning In order to spawn the Wither in Minecraft, you have to create a T-shape out of soul sand with three Wither Skeleton skulls on top of it. This method of spawning the Wither was actually inspired by the interactiveness of Terraria's bosses, which Jeb stated in February of 2017. Icemorn, Scythe, and Soul Scythe the Icemorn, Scythe, and Soul Scythe are all items that were planned to be in the game, but were unfortunately removed due to a potential infringement of copyright. Relogic has already had their fair share of dealing with companies like Nintendo in the past, and didn't want to deal with potentially even more legal trouble with other companies over in-game items. And it's really a shame, because these weapons seriously look good. Old Plumbers and Heroes Clothes In old console and mobile versions of the game, there were different sprites for the Plumbers and Hero set, with the Plumber having alternate colors, and the Hero set being purple instead of green. Chinese New Year 
the Chinese version of Terraria was going to have a planned Chinese New Year event, and a lot of the things related to it were added to the game as unobtainable items, including firecrackers and a dragon outfit. But for unknown reasons, the event was never fully implemented into the final game. There's really no telling as to why this might be, especially since the developers haven't said anything about why this was never finished. Jungle Mimic The Jungle Mimic is a rather unknown variant of the Mimic, and the only way it will naturally spawn is in the 10th anniversary seed that I talked about earlier, and the seed Get Fixed Boy. And if killed, the enemy drops several weird items from Terra Toilets, Red Potions, Stink Potions, and Golden Showers. Falling Moon The Falling Moon was an idea alongside the concept of the Moon Lord in which the original idea was that he would bring the moon to you alongside the alien invasion, which would become the Martian invasion, and then would later become the Moon Lord. Not much has been said about this concept though, but some people say that the moon would even crash into Earth and would make your world inaccessible after, but come on. <laughs> the Order of the Guide the beginning of the game's lore states that some of the stories of old were passed down by a group of people called the Order of the Guide, in which the guide you spawn with is also assumed to be involved with. This also tells us that the guides are in a group, and that they may have more complex lives than we initially thought. Moonlord and Cthulhu Many people have been confused as to if the Moonlord and Cthulhu are actually associated with each other, and how they would be if they even are. It was originally theorized that they were brothers, and the lore states that they're the same entity. It is believed that Cthulhu was weakened in conflict, and then became the Moon Lord after going to the moon to stay safe, and even though the lore states this, people are still confused about it. Super Mario Bros. X Super Mario Bros. X is an unofficial Mario game that served as a Mario fan game engine written by Redigit in July of 2009. The game is written in Visual Basic 6, and development eventually stopped in 2011 as Red moved on to much bigger projects. Demolitionist is a dwarf. The Demolitionist has a lot of traits similar to dwarves, like being shorter than average and selling explosives that are often used underground. He is also referred to as a dwarf in the bestiary, so I mean, yeah, he definitely is a dwarf then. Final Fantasy Sprites In older versions of Terraria, Player sprites would resemble those of characters from Final Fantasy V, most noticeable with the bottom portion of the sprite. Fallen Heroes Skeletons in the dungeon hold several different weapons, ranging from sniper rifles to paladin's hammer, suggesting that they could be previous heroes who fell victim to the lunatic cult. Euromir ARG On July 10th, 2017, Cenex tweeted a link to a YouTube video called The Game, which took you to this video. And if you were able to figure out the hidden message, it would give you the password to this Dropbox file, which contained a very special world. On this adventure map, you are given the task to venture through an ancient labyrinth, and only the most patient adventurers will be rewarded at the very end. The map is riddled with puzzles, including a massive item switch puzzle, and if you manage to reach the very end, you would be rewarded with an unlisted Euromir video, breaking his at the time streak of 734 days without uploading a video. And though the video isn't unlisted anymore, the ARG was still a very enjoyable event for everybody involved. Five Angel Statue IDs Angel statues, while being useless, were often used to replace removed items in their respective IDs, which explains how angel statues technically have five different IDs in the game's code. White Cultist the cultists always appear blue in-game, but there also exists an unused white cultist which goes unused in the game. It's assumed that the devs are going to implement white cultists as well, but very quickly switch to blue, and just forgot to remove the white one. Traveling Merchant is Asian. The Traveling Merchant sells many different Asian items, which leads many people to believe that the Traveling Merchant is Asian, or at least comes from Asia. Wraith are dead NPCs. The Wraith has a Collector's Edition card that says that Wraiths are made of those that die because of the Eater of Worlds, and that they wander alone through the world trying to claim another soul. Nanana's Buried Treasure Nanana's Buried Treasure is a Japanese light novel series that originated in January of 2012, and in Episode 1 and 5 of the TV series, one of the characters is playing Terraria on more than one occurrence in the show.
Shiny Black Slab. The Shiny Black Slab is an item that summoned a pet android, which has the same look as the popular character used by Android, which is also exclusive to the Android versions of the game. Tim manifests when needed. When wearing a gem robe, Tim has a higher chance to spawn since he drops his wizard hat, but not his rope. The changelog also states that Tim will come when the player needs a hat. Boring Bow As the name of the item suggests, the Boring Bow is an unused item that doesn't have, well, any stats, and it might as well be as useless as an angel statue. Knight's Edge Toy Inaccuracy This entry is referring to the fact that the Knight's Edge Toy Sword has a much different texture than the actual Knight's Edge in the game. The differences in the swords are the most noticeable right above the handles and right at the guard. Vertigo Challenge The Vertigo Challenge is a challenge that consists of beating Terraria while being upside down the entire time. I don't know how anyone is supposed to do this, but yeah, that's what this is. Old Gen Pets There were several pets in the Old Gen versions of Terraria that would deal damage to enemies, and as for why this was removed, the developers wanted the pets to be purely vanity, so the feature was eventually removed. Terraria 2 Terraria 2 was a planned sequel for Terraria, and little is known about the game since it was announced all the way back in 2012, with no updates on the game itself, as well as no release dates or any other information about it. Otherworld was supposed to be Terraria 2, but that obviously didn't happen. Mysterious Package the Mysterious Package is an unobtainable summoner item that was supposed to summon a drone that would drop a box every couple of minutes. The most accepted reason for why this wasn't included in the game is that it might have been intended to only be available for people who bought the game on Amazon. Pixel Piracy Pixel Piracy was a 2D real-time strategy game published by Relogic in April of 2015. The Falcon Blade, Pirate Minions, Ginger Beard, and some other items are from this game, and Relogic also added the Star Fury into this game as well. This game seems to have a pretty mixed amount of reviews, but it honestly looks like it's probably fine. Pre-Hard Mode Hollow The Hollow can still exist in pre-hard mode, and if it exists in a pre-hard mode world, it will spread much slower than it normally would. Merchant Can Predict The Merchant can sometimes say that he feels like an evil presence is watching him, which only shows up when the requirements to fight the Eye of Cthulhu are met. 120 billion seeds. It is estimated that there are around 120 billion different possible seeds that could be generated in Terraria. To really put this number into perspective, if all 35 million copies of the game were each used to generate a world, each copy would need roughly 3,428 worlds in order to get all of the possible seeds. Clown Bomb Clown bombs used to be capable of destroying tiles, causing massive destruction during a blood moon that was almost entirely unavoidable. The feature was added in update 1.1, but it wouldn't be until update 1.2 until the feature was finally removed. Corruptor Up until 1.2, corruptors were able to spread corruption by spitting on whatever tiles they hit, causing an already irritating spread to become even harder to contain later on. pre t -mod -load. Team Mod Loader pretty much now holds a modding monopoly on Terraria, but several different modding tools existed alongside Team Mod Loader, and they all worked similarly to how things like CurseForge and MultiMC work in Minecraft. Eerie. The dungeon, corruption, and the underworld used to all play the song called Eerie in the background, and it's only used in now when the player is inside of a meteorite bio. The song was most likely removed from the other biomes to try and make way for a wider variety of music. Red's Wings and No Clue Very early on in 1.2, Red's Wings would cause the player to move through blocks. This was obviously removed pretty fast, but it was actually an intended feature as the dev items back then only existed as dev tools, with Red's Wings being a tool for no clipping in the game. Orange Sky in the earliest versions of Terraria, the sky and the corruption was orange. It's unknown why the devs made it this way, but it was most likely just a placeholder until a proper background for the biome was made. Purple Splunker Ore Very early versions of the Splunker Potion would show a purple tint to locate ores, rather than the yellow one that the devs ended up changing it to. 
Dimensions of the World Barrier. By shooting projectiles at the barrier, the sound of it hitting a block will happen, but oddly enough, the sound won't happen if you hit it with rockets. Projectiles also sometimes don't make any noise at all, so what is the barrier? Dread Nautilus. There's a lot of mystery surrounding the Dread Nautilus, as well as its status as an enemy. It has a boss like spawn, requires you to fish during a blood moon to spawn it, has similar stats to other bosses around it, and drops banners rather than a trophy, but it is categorized as a mini boss regardless if it was intended to be a normal boss. Containing the Moon Lord. Some people believe that the cultists chant to the Moon Lord in an attempt to keep him away from the world, and after you kill the cultists, the Moon Lord approaches the world. The idea is that during the fight, the lunatic cultist wants you to blindly kill away the people sealing the Moon Lord away, which could explain why all of the events unfold after the cultist is defeated. The golem also plays a role in protecting the world by containing these godly entities even more, and not really making the cultists as necessary. Broken Code. Now I'm not a developer by any stretch of the imagination, but considering that Red has said that the game has spaghetti code, I'm confident in saying that while Terraria is still functional without problems, the game's code is apparently absolute spaghetti. The code apparently has a lot of unnecessary text, images not being in image folders, and other things that I think I'd rather just take the dev's word on for. The Corruption Reanimates Dead Humans. Terraria's lore states that the corruption has consumed other worlds in the past, and is often treated like a god more than it is a disease. Some people have made human sacrifices to the cancer that is the corruption, which blinded and robbed these people of freely thinking, and the cancer is constructed by sins that the world faces. Hive Mind Unlike the corruption being a cancerous disease, the crimson is a hive mind grown and made by the minds of creatures that reside on the world itself. The Crimson also holds awareness in that it only spreads and makes hateful creatures to punish the sinners by taking the world away. And after it restores balance to it, the Crimson will then destroy the world. Special Edition Not to be confused with the Collector's Edition, the Special Edition of Terraria was distributed by 505 Games, and the edition included three character stickers, a Sew on Wizard patch, some cool Eye of Cthulhu art, and the CD along with a custom design for the case. The Special Edition is nowhere near as known as the Collector's Edition, but the Special Edition still offered some pretty cool exclusive content. Golem is Mud Similar to the Golem from Minecraft, the Golem in Terraria is based on golems in Jewish folklore, which resemble beings made of clay and mud, who were made to protect townspeople, which could explain why the Golem is based inside of a populated temple. Queen Bee Beta Sprite The Queen Bee originally had a much different beta sprite that more so resembled a hornet, almost entirely the opposite of the sprite that we ended up getting. All glowing mushrooms are children. The Truffle has a quote that says that we steal his children when talking about glowing mushrooms, and maybe the Truffle is just being figurative, but this would then mean that he loves glowing mushrooms just for us to take them for our own personal needs. Be safe, Terraria needs you. Just like how the Truffle says that we steal his children, the Dryad says to be safe and that Terraria needs us. The Dryad is talking about purity, and notice how the Dryad talks about Terraria itself and not just the one world that you're in. Exploding Snowman The game files has an unused snowman with dynamite attached to the top of its head, and it seems to have been considered to be a part of the Frost Legion. The enemy is assumed to explode because, obviously, and if this were to ever be added back in, I think that it should explode into snow blocks, dealing damage to the player at the same time. Mick Money Pants I mentioned this earlier when talking about Chinese New Year, but Mick Money Pants is an unspawnable NPC during this event, and it only has one quote as well as a help button that would often crash the game if you tried to use it. Moonsmiley.png There exists 12 possible moon styles in Terraria, and the smiley moon is the rarest, only being able to be seen on the seed 516-2020. Metal Detector It's possible to detect heart crystals by using a metal detector, and this would then mean that the hearts have some sort of metal compound 
because how else would a metal detector detect a crystal? Terrarium. Not only is it confirmed information that the name Terraria is based off of a terrarium, but it might also serve as the inspiration for the way the worlds look, the world being finite, as well as why the worlds look like they're in a massive terrarium to begin with. Guide is Ninja's brother. According to Red, the ninja that's inside of King Slime is actually the brother of the guide. Infinite Flight. If you manage to obtain a set of Red's wings before update 1.3, they would grant the ability to infinitely fly and have faster movement than any other wings in the game. Severed Hand The Severed Hand was an enemy that was planned for the Solar Eclipse event, and it's thought to not have been added due to it being incredibly hard to see during the event. There's also an unobtainable banner for the enemy in the game files. Terraria Worms 3 Worms 3 is a mobile game that features crossover content in Terraria as well as having some of Terraria's items in the game itself. Terraria's content features the Holy Hand Grenade from earlier, as well as three other items, and Worms 3 features gravestones, five different pieces of armor, as well as Terraria sound effects. Redigit Head Cannon Red has been seen to sometimes say things that don't seem to make a lot of sense to the game's lore, and this resulted in players saying that Redigit has his own head cannon separate from the actual lore. Mud Physics Mud used to actually have falling properties like sand, and until it was removed, it was really weird in the way it behaved. Seedler Fishing The Seedler is a hard mode sword that has a 15% chance to be dropped by Plantera, and in early versions of 1.3, the Seedler could be fished in the jungle at any given time, and due to the insane advantages this would cause, the feature was removed not too long after it was introduced. Paper Bat VG Paper Bat VG is the first non-developer to make a Terraria Let's Play series on YouTube. His first upload of the game predates any other video by a normal player, with his first upload of the game being on April 28, 2011, also predating the game's official release date by over two weeks. There could be a slim chance that Paper Bat isn't actually the first player to upload a video of the game, but it is the oldest non-developer video on YouTube. The Merchant is a Father In the painting, Father of Someone, a person is depicted that is assumed to be none other than the merchant. This has led to small theories about not only the merchant being a father, but who the son of the merchant might be. Terraria lore is false. Some people believe that Terraria's official lore was made to mislead people into figuring out the real lore, with people finding the actual game's lore to not really make any sense. And as for what the actual lore is, well, I don't know, you tell me. Pre-hard mode crystal shards. In the mobile version, it was possible to get crystal shards before hard mode by killing an enemy called an archdemon, which dropped crystal shards up until the removal in 1.3. Burning Skull. For a short period of time, cursed skulls were referred to as burning skulls, and they used to have the old skull sprite with fire trailing behind it, but the animation, as well as the name, was removed in version 1.0.5. Non-Explodable Ebonstone Up until version 1.1, Ebonstone was unable to be destroyed with any form of explosives. Pre-Hard Mode Drax On earlier mobile versions, the Drax was originally obtainable from shadow chests in the underworld until the Hollowed Bars recipe was properly implemented. Big Boned, Short Bones before update 1.2, there were two different skeletons used in the game, called Big Boned and Short Bones. Jeremy Blue Garrett Jeremy Garrett was the original co-owner of Terraria, who also helped work on Super Mario Bros. X with Redigit. He worked on Terraria from January to September of 2011, but ended up leaving the dev team, and is now no longer associated with Relogic. Blood Nautilus in the teaser trailer for 1.4, the Dread Nautilus has a different name, being called the Blood Nautilus instead of Dread Nautilus. Unused Trapped Chests There are four unused trapped chests inside of the game files, with all of the items sharing the same item ID of 441. Deerclops Leg When the Deerclops boss was added in 1.4.3, an unused Deerclops Leg NPC was also introduced but ended up going unused when the update came out.
Fire Flower. In the bottom right corner of the map in the 3DS version, there's a hidden Fire Flower from Super Mario World visible outside of the game's boundaries. Terraria worlds are sentient. Every Terraria world was made sentient by the gods of Terraria and can feel the thoughts of all creatures that reside on it. The world is sentient to keep the world balanced and fair for all creatures, committing to tremendous measures like spreading the world of evil in the event that somebody does come to power. And you as the player manage to grow as the strongest creature alive, all against the wishes of the world itself. The Hollow cures the world by killing life. The Hollow is the extreme of purity and spreads Hollow to combat the infection of powerful creatures as well as the evils of corruption and crimson. This is performed by killing all that stands in its way, no matter what their alignment is. Lunar Pillars are Illusions During the Pillar event after killing the Lunatic Cultist, the Pillars have defeat messages that talk about how your mind goes numb and that you can hear voices, which could imply that the Cultist made them as an illusion to see how mentally strong you as a player really are and it's totally possible that destroying these pillars releases you from the mental torment. 11 Items In Expert Mode, the Traveling Merchant has a 1 in 98,304 chance of selling 11 different items at the same time. Poisonous Spore Similarly to the Severed Hand, the Poisonous Spore is an unused enemy in the game's code that only has a banner to go with it. This concept art depicts what this enemy may have looked like but there's really no telling what it actually was going to be. Nun 2 Nun 2 is an unused enemy that looks really similar to a wandering eye, but is actually different and isn't used anywhere in the game. There's also another entry called Mini Flow Invader right beside this one, so I'm going to just group these two entries together. Roar underscore 2 dot X and B Roar 2 is a sound effect found inside of the game files which sounds exactly like the noise that the Ravager makes in the Calamity mod, which is probably because it is. And this is what it sounds like. <coughs> Obsessed 4chan player. On May 23rd, 2016, an anonymous user on 4chan started posting about how they had well over 3,500 characters, as well as creating an entire functioning society in a Terraria world, complete with races, factions, a financial system, and just so many other things that it's seriously impossible to tell whether or not this is real or just a really, really intense trolling operation. But judging by the sheer amount of posts, as well as a lot of different screenshots of this guy's world in and out of it, I'm leaning towards this probably being real. Zombie AI Now, I want to believe that the zombie AI has over 3,000 lines of code to make it work, but for one, I'm not an experienced programmer whatsoever, and two, I looked through the game's source code and couldn't find any AI for the zombie that was 3,000 lines long, so if this is true, if you're watching this and have any actual programming experience, please show this to me because I really want to believe that this is true. Dazed Dazed is an unused debuff that would affect the speed and jump height of the player, and it's uncertain why the debuff was removed from the game. Hamish based on webcomic. I talked earlier about how The Legend of Max is the longest running Terraria webcomic, but something I didn't tell you is that the comic is also responsible for the creation of the Hamish in Terraria. In Comic 74 issued on June 22nd, 2012, this comic was created in which a hammer that deals crushing damage was referred to as the Hamish, and this inspired Relogic to actually add this as an in-game item. Unobtainable Achievements there are currently four achievements on the PC version that are impossible to obtain legitimately, and the achievements include Pumpkin Smasher, Independence Day, Behind the Mask, and Hex Education. Phasic Warp Ejector The Phasic Warp Ejector is an unimplemented and incomplete item, with the only stats that it has being an item ID, as well as Phasic Warp Discs that are assumed to go along with it. And judging by its general appearance, it was probably going to be a part of the Martian Madness. Corruption is Narlothotep. Narlothotep is a Lovecraftian outer god who gains followers by gathering legions of people who lose their awareness around him, which isn't too dissimilar from the way the corruption spreads. Life Crystals 
up until version 1.0.0, the Eye of Cthulhu would actually drop life crystals upon death. Bone Serpent The Bone Serpent was initially able to drop the Flame Lash as well as the Sun Fury before eventually being moved to Shadow Chests in version 1.0.6. Normal Pots in Underworld In early versions of the game, the Underworld featured normal pots and heart crystals rather than specifically designed Underworld pots and no life crystals at all. Hornets were going to be Manted Flies There were several sprites of the Hornets being shaped like Manted Flies, having legs while also having a standard bee design, but nobody really knows if this was ever actually going to be implemented. Lava Knockback For a very short time in the game's beginnings, Lava would inflict knockback on any player who decided to jump in it. Player name was slain. When the game was first being made, death messages would actually contain the player's username instead of saying that you have been slain. Green Restoration Potions Just like with Lava Knockback, for a very short time in the game, Restoration Potions were green instead of being purple and pink like they are today. Hollowed Seeds from Demon Altars in the Deep Corruption preview for Update 1.1, breaking a demon altar would cause it to drop hollowed seeds. I think that this was probably due to every destroyed block at the time needing a drop in code, so hollowed seeds were used as a placeholder until they could figure out how to get the hollow to actually spawn. Unused Grass This isn't the only unused type of grass in the game files, but this specific one was supposed to be used on the beaches and was eventually scrapped and obviously never used. Split Shot Core The Split Shot Core is an unused Empress of Light projectile, and if you spawn it in anyway, it will continuously split into other projectiles before eventually going away. Filters There are five unused filters in the Bestiary, which are Oasis, Blizzard, Hard Node, Slime Rain, and Item Spawn. Leaked Beta Version In May of 2011, when the game was going through its development cycle, a past beta version was leaked to the public before it was supposed to be released. This obviously infuriated the creators, and there was really nothing that could be done about it, especially since gameplay videos appeared all over YouTube not too long after the leak. DD2 Attacker Test DD2 Attacker Test is an unused enemy that was most likely used by the developers to test out the Old One's army, and there is literally no other information about it other than what is shown. Noise.png I talked about something similar to this in the Minecraft Iceberg video, and the Noise.png in Terraria is really not that much different in what it's supposed to do. Noise.png, as well as another file called Perlin.png, are just noise generators, and both Minecraft and Terraria use Perlin noise generation when making world seeds. Screenshake Metaphor The screenshake during the tense moments of the impending doom seems to fade in and out at a constant rate, almost like it's an implication for your heart rate during the moments of the impending doom. Missing World Seeds Worlds that use secret world seeds are generated using a different random seed, and that means that the actual worlds for those seeds are most likely impossible to generate under normal circumstances. Team Killing The Vulcan Repeater is an Okram item that can be crafted using Souls of Blight. The item had special arrows called Vulcan Arrows, which would explode on impact, attacking everything including players, resulting in easily being able to kill anyone even if PvP wasn't enabled. Old Skeleton the sprite of the skeleton hasn't really changed since release, but the change was really weird when it did. Originally, the skeleton had no cover-up for the front body, showing his bones, and was also a lot skinnier. There was also a sprite of a one-legged skeleton in red with a gold-colored zipper, but I just can't seem to find this one anywhere. Aaron C141 In 2013, Relogic hired a new texture artist named Aaron C141 and this sprite sheet that he had developed unintentionally ended up spoiling 1.2 items, as well as spoiling items that never made it into the final update. You wake up from a strange dream. There is an unused string of text found inside of the game files, simply called, You wake up from a strange dream. This was supposedly left out due to a scrapped event, but was it really? 
Deadly Sphere. The Deadly Sphere is an enemy that spawns during the Solar Eclipse event. They fly randomly in the direction of the player, but there also exists an unused form of the Deadly Sphere, which looks like this. Other Guardians. Defeating the Wall of Flesh releases the Spirits of Light and Dark, but does not directly mention the Wall of Flesh, stating that each world had a Guardian, implying that there are other Guardians for each world that contained the Spirits for each individual world. I tend to be more pessimistic on this idea, since I know that every world has a Wall of Flesh for a Guardian, but the idea is certainly open to interpretation. All Paintings Combine there is a theory that claims that every single painting in Terraria all combined into one massive image, but as of right now, nobody has truly found any combinations within the 173 different paintings in Terraria. Hamframe5.wxb There is literally not a single thing on the internet about this entry, and considering that a meme iceberg is the first thing that comes up when you try to look this up, I'm going to make the assumption that this entry is just some random inside joke somewhere. And wherever this friend group is, I really wish I was in on the joke, because I would love to know what the fuck this means.